What's up everybody, Ty Hansen coming to you with another video and for once I'm not going to apologise for my ugly mug. No, if you don't want to see it, you can just put up another fucking window and just listen to me, in which case you've hurt my feelings. But, uh, today's video is, um, I'm making this on a Friday because we're, we're coming up to the weekend and as you may or may not have heard, we're currently experiencing a little thing called a global pandemic. I think the kids these days call it COVID-19, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. Sure. However, um, as a result of said lockdown, we can't go out anywhere. And I've, we've had these lockdowns before and I've, I've actually handled it quite well. I've handled it like a fucking champion in the past. But that was in the past where I had money to, to buy games or model kits. And I mean, for those of you who don't know, I like to build model kits uh, like this one and this, 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 this and this. I, used, I, I mean, I know that's a shock to some of you to, to find out suddenly that I'm uh, that that I'm into some nerdy stuff, and I know I know people. I, I I understand your surprise. I mean, I am a very masculine, manly man that's into power tools and sports ball and six skitties ripping some Winnie Blues. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm sorry if you're just now finding this out about me. I apologize. It's it's a lot to take in. I know, giggity. But recently, I had some issues going on with my little peepers. Uh, in which case, I had to go in for some specialist testings and had to find out all this other sort of fun and games to make sure I was okay and going to survive and going to live. Uh, apparently, when you're a specialist and you work in a job where you're testing people, apparently, uh, these specialists decided that they uh, needed to get paid uh, for their services. And... They ended up issuing me with a uh, with an invoice for a couple of hundred dollars. Now that's not as bad as a couple of thousand dollar invoice, I know, and I'm very grateful for that. But a couple of hundred dollars just given to me willy nilly, like literally like two days ago, I wasn't expecting it, and that's kind of left me destitute and broke. That means that I can no longer afford said video games or said models or entertainment to keep me occupied during the weekend and to give Kelsey some fucking sanity. So what do I do? That's part of why I'm making this video, isn't it? I decided that I'm gonna um, dust off the old pencil and paper and, and do a drawing video. I'm gonna draw something. Um, for those of you who don't know, I used to love drawing when I was in high school. I know, I know, it's, I'm such a stereotypical joke. I mean, I know it's a shock to find out that I was even back then. I still liked nerdy shit. Who'd have thunk it? I mean, I mean, I was certainly blindsided by it. I understand if you are too. But, um, yeah, so I used to draw a lot of Dragon Ball Z shit back in high school. Um, actually, I drew this back in high school, a picture of Gogeta, and it's uh, it was drawn many, 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 many moons ago. And um, it still holds up as a pretty good drawing today. I'm, I'm still a big fan, and I would actually go back and redraw it and do one of those, oh, from then to now transitions, but it was a little bit boring. I didn't want to draw the same thing again, and I'm actually quite happy with how I drew the original one. So! Thought I might actually draw a different picture of Gogeta. Gogeta being one of my favourite characters from Dragon Ball Z. And the old picture that I drew back in high school, uh, that was a version of Gogeta when he, he wasn't a canon character. And recently he's been made canon via the Dragon Ball Super uh, Broly movie that came out a couple of years ago. So uh, yeah, we're going to go back to Gogeta, do a bit of a full circle. And I wanted to draw something. So I went on to Le Google. And I punched up a whole bunch of Gogeta images and printed out a couple of them and, and saved a couple of the hard drives and to my hard drive and sent them out to a few friends and gave a few mates some choices. And all overwhelmingly, they chose this one. So, let's not procrastinate any longer and let's get to it. Okay, let's get this shit started. I apologize for the camera angle. Uh, I, it's my first time I've really done this kind of thing. This video is going to be sped up quite a bit because this little sketch phase took me about 45 minutes. So we are going to take this to the computer and color it in as well. Um, so usually when we do that, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm usually very, very loose and free handed with the, uh, with the initial sketch phase. And that's mainly because of just how forgiving Photoshop is. I, Usually you can go in, and you'll see this later on, I have a lot of chance to go in and uh, correct uh, proportions and to move things around when I have the intention of digitally colouring them in. Uh, 
I'm actually just uh, sketching it in here, and as you'll see in a second, I, I really went a little heavy on these forearms, and uh, yeah, nah, they, they, they are fucked. They, oh, out they go. Uh, so yeah, so let's just um, sketch this one in real quick, and we'll fucking mosey on to the rest of the body. Um, yeah, so we're going through the motions here. Um, as we're sketching through, you know, I'll just move to different parts of the body, no particular order. I am a little concerned about going into the face, as you'll see in a second, because when the picture is as small as it is, I'm losing quite a lot of detail uh, with the face. I can't quite see a lot of the, uh, the facial uh, features there. Uh, you can see it just fine, but it's really hard to recreate and make look good. And uh, like, I, I actually struggle with this a lot, guys. Um, it's, I, I think I had like four or five goes, maybe maybe six. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna keep all of them in this video, but yeah, like as you can see, here we go again, round three, fight. Uh, it, it just it just didn't work out for me. In the end, I, I ended up just going with it blank, and um, yeah, like it just never worked out. Uh, as I said though, I'll, I'll be able to maybe go in and fix all this up later. I'm not gonna worry about the face too much. Uh, giving it a red hot crack and trying to make some corrections to get as close as we can But it just didn't seem to work out for me. Uh, it really didn't so right now I'm just trying to put uh, <clears throat> put that to the back of my head and I'm gonna go in and just define some lines Anyways, uh, yeah, so we're just putting in some of these lines I'm actually drawing in some of the lines for the highlights and the shades uh, in the hair um, that's typically because this hair is going to be predominantly black anyway, so you'll see when we take this to the digital phase, uh, you know, really what we do with it, like, you know, it makes my job a little bit easier when drawing things in. I really could do this at any point, but, eh, fuck it, I, I drew it this way. So, uh, yeah, I'm sort of just going through, just darkening some of my lines, making sure that I like the placement of things. Uh, this obviously isn't going to be a finished result of any kind. You'll see, you know, what this looks like towards the end of it uh, shortly. But um, yeah, it's just going in, just blocking things out, making sure I've got a nice strong silhouette that looks fairly accurate to what I'm trying to achieve here. Um, I'm actually adding a few details in here and there and leaving a few out, kind of just making it my own. And uh, yeah, as you can see, fucking voila. Um, all right, let's uh, take this over to Photoshop. Alrighty, we've had some food, now it's time for some line art. So we're in Photoshop now, and what you'll see me doing right now, so I'm actually just going to cut out the head and move it a little bit towards centre, and change a few of the proportions there. Um, we sketched it incorrectly before, so this is the, the generous side of using Photoshop where you can make all those corrections. Um, so yeah, now I'm just getting my, my brush size ready and I'm going to go in using the pen tool and I'm going to start tracing the drawing using layers. So uh, if you don't know what layers are, it's essentially the same as uh, putting down like a, a blank bit of tracing paper. And so right now I'm using that pen tool to trace over all of my pre-existing lines and curving them as they're needed and then using a uh, stroke path to uh, basically the, the, pen, uh, the pen tool or the brush tool will actually just follow over that line and, and draw according to where you've, uh, yeah, where, where you've um, made the curves and where that pen tool is going. So as you can see here, I'm just gonna go in and just start um, blitzing through the body. We're not gonna spend too much time on this section. This section took me about an hour or so in real time, but obviously we're speeding this up. Um, what we are about to see in a second is the finished result of the lineup. Right here, I'm just, I ended up bringing the arm in quite considerably and um, I just uh, made a correction there. But essentially, this is uh, what you're going to be looking at. So that's essentially the lineup there when all, when all said and done, guys. So now we've got our line art ready to go, uh, it's time to start the colours. So uh, for this sort of process, um, again it's speeding through pretty quickly because this process did take substantially longer than an hour for the, than it did for the line art, but I'll use the magic wand tool and I'll select the, the areas, um, then I'll go to select up the top and I will uh, increase the selection size by one pixel, that way it pushes it into the actual line itself. 
I'll create a new layer and put it underneath the line art layer as you're seeing there on the right hand side. And then I'll just drop the old paint bucket down and um, yeah, I'll just start applying some flat colors. I'll usually build up some more volume as we go. Uh, later on you'll see that, but right now I'm gonna focus on those flats. Don't mind the fact that he looks like a bit of an Oompa Loompa right now, but uh, don't worry, we're gonna fix that up. I've actually used kind of a, a dark to medium skin tone for some of the shadows that are gonna be applied. There's gonna be a very large majority of uh, skin tone that's gonna have some, uh, some lighter highlights in there. So right now it's not getting too married down to uh, how odd he looks as a whole because uh, it, it, it's all about patience at the end of the day. Um, I've done this for a while now, by no means am I professional, uh, but I know enough of my ability to know that this ship is going to turn around and he's not going to look like an Oompa Loompa for long. And some of these really odd looking sections are going to get fixed up, like uh, it's a little bit weird that he doesn't have a face right now, and it's a little bit off-putting, but I know that uh, I'll eventually pick this up and get that face done, um, and then, yeah, that's about it. So right now what I'm doing is I'm pretty much just freeform making some shapes. I'm looking at the reference image off to the side of my screen and I'm just sort of like kind of making up my own shadows whilst also using the shadows as reference uh, on the original image. But I'm not getting married to, you know, I'm not getting married to, you know, exactly where they are. And there you go. Uh, that's a highlight right there from, from a light source. Um, I do have to admit the light source for this image is a little bit distracting because in Dragon Ball Z the light source, while it's it, it's while it can be correct, it obviously looks different because when characters power up, there's no one individual light source coming in from a particular area. Uh, you know, like the charge up is happening, the key is firing from all around the body, so you're going to have weird shades, shadows, and highlights from all around the place. So again, I'm just going through and I'm using the reference image as best I can to rough out some of these areas. So yeah, I'm uh, going to go through, drop some shadows down. So now you can see I'm doing shadows and highlights at the same time, uh, correcting some of the shapes and really just uh, fleshing this guy out. As you can see though, he's, he's already looking a lot less like an Oompa Loompa. And now what I'll do is I'll go through and I'll draw in some shapes right on the edge of it. And as you see, I'll, I'm changing different layers as well. Um, and yeah, there we go. So now we're starting to add uh, edged highlights to the image. So kind of like where the light source is going to be hitting the jacket. So like I said before, there's there's several different light sources in the original reference image, and I'm just using that as a base. So yeah, so we're going through now, and uh, yeah, we're just going to keep building those colors up. This process took me... I want to say about an hour and a half, maybe closer to two hours to uh, get this entire colouring process done. Uh, the pants were a, like, they, they took a while. Um, I left out a lot of detail in drawing the pants. I kind of wish that I'd spent a little bit longer in the sketching phase uh, drawing some of those details in. But again, it wasn't 100% necessary. It wasn't like I needed it. Um, I, like I said before, I've done this enough to know that I'm going to be fine. It's just drawing it in later. So you can either deal with the headache later or you can deal with it now. Either way, we're going to get it done. So now I'm just going to go through these pants. I'm going to add some highlights. I'm going to start dropping them in where the, where they are, you know, matching where the folds are on the clothing. I'm not trying to be super realistic with this because again, it's Dragon Ball Z guys. It's hyper stylized and there's a million different light sources. So I'm just kind of just, all I'm trying to do is just blow some of the dust off in terms of my skill level. And I'm just trying to um, feel out what I'm capable of. And I'm just trying to have some fun with it. And I think that's the main point of this entire process, you know, have fun with it. Don't judge yourself or critique yourself too harshly, unless of course you're trying to become a professional, in which case, yeah, never stop comparing yourself um, to the works of your peers. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I just mean that in the most productive way possible. Um, uh, so yeah, as you can see here, we're coming towards the end here. I'm getting pretty happy with where we are. Um, I'm actually, I actually ended up, in the, I ended up getting really sick and tired of the face not being there. And um, I ended up grabbing that, uh, the, the face from the original image and I ended up uh, enhancing it quite a bit. Enhance. 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 Uh, so yeah, 
Um, by enhancing, I mean I grabbed the original image, I zoomed, I zoomed it right in, and rather than looking off the A4 paper, uh, I actually just zoomed right in on the face of the original reference, put it up on my monitor, and I used that as a base sketch, and then I went through and sketched it into paint after that. So this is what he looks like as is right now. I'm pretty happy with the results. Again, I've kind of made it my own. I haven't really kept 100% to the reference image, but that's what I kind of like about it as well. So now we're going to accentuate this with a whole bunch of energy and let's uh, get down and have some more fun. Right, here yo, we're onto the last stage of this and it's probably the funnest part and that's ed uh, adding the special effects and mucking around with energy charge ups and everything like that. So what I'm doing now is I'm just playing around with a few colors. I'm still using the reference image as a base for the kind of colors I want to go with, but uh, the more I get into this, the more I'm really just putting all that aside and just doing whatever I feel like doing. I'm just having fun. Um, and, and that really is the exercise here. It's just having a little bit of fun. I'm not charging anyone for this shit. This isn't professional work by, by any standard. So right now I'm just grabbing nice blue and purples, mixing them together. I crack open another layer and I start drawing uh, the, the the patented energy charge up from Dragon Ball Z, which is, it, it just looks like a, a fucking, uh, a, a porcupine on crack, really. Um, but I'll, I'll do that a couple of times. I'll blur uh, certain versions of it and erase certain parts of it. Because when these guys, when these, when these uh, spicy boys do do their power-ups in Dragon Ball Z, it never completely encompasses them. It's, it's energy, so... Um, it's always radiating outwards and around and past them. Sometimes it will go in front of the body, sometimes it's going to pass behind. So that's really what we're doing here. Um, sometimes I'll actually, um, it's, just, it's really important with Dragon Ball Z, uh, when they do their power-ups, you get that, that, that screen shake um, and they'll start powering up and parts of their body will, will almost seem to distort. So in, in what I'm doing here is I'm grabbing that picture of uh, Gogeta I'm putting that over there and I'm using a motion blur um, and then erasing the rest of it to keep most of him in focus. So now I'm just going to go through, play around with colors a little bit more, add some glowing effects to Gogeta. Um, I, I, I'll keep on. You'll actually see me uh, duplicate him a couple of times here just to keep certain parts of him in focus. And now start doing some, some foreground energy lines. Uh, I'll generally use the same line over and over and just uh, warp it. That way uh, you're pretty much um, certain of getting a different uh, energy line each time. Even though it's the same one over and over, if you continue to warp it in different ways, it's going to look different every time. Um, and so yeah, I'm just really just playing around here, just seeing what sticks. Uh, you'll see some of these lines disappear, then some of them will stick around, but then I'll just blow them out. Uh, less is more when it comes to some of these lines in the foreground. You don't want it pulling, uh, pulling attention, uh, attention away from Gogeta. So now I'm just adding a few uh, little uh, orbs. I'll uh, Gaussian blur them out. Uh, then uh, what I'll end up doing here is you'll see me do it in a second, is I'll start smudging those and blurring those out because what I'm using is I'm using these little orbs and discs as light sources for further power up. So it's really just playing around, experimenting, getting the right colors into the palette, like into the, into the image that it, that's gonna complement your image. Uh, and yeah, just just play around. Uh, just have a, have fun with it. Really, at the end of the day, that's all this is all about. Uh, this is the funnest part of, of anything for me uh, is playing around with the special effects. And oh, I'm a thirsty boy when it comes to glows. I do love my glows and my color dodges and shit like that. So uh, here's what I'm talking about now: is I'm grabbing those orbs and those discs from the foreground, and I'm actually blurring them out. So now I've grabbed like a sky background that was from Millennium Exile and I've put that in the background and I'm playing around with that. I'm grabbing some stock footage that I'm finding on the internet. Uh, you know, again, this isn't, I'm not charging for this. I'm not going to be entering this in any competitions. This is for fun. So I'm grabbing some stock footage, some, uh, some fiery uh, explosion in the background. And now I'm just chucking this into Lightroom where I have a little bit more control over the hue and color balances. And I'll play around with that for a little bit until I'm really happy with it. So yeah, that's pretty much where we're at guys. Um, I'm just going to play around with these sliders and we're done. 